another record for the incredible Michael Schumacher, the first man to win the same Grand Prix seven times. Next weekend, a reminder for it is the United States Grand Prix from Indianapolis. Our coverage will continue on ITV2 coming up on ITV1 tonight. It is England, France, live from Lisbon. Enjoy. Good night from Montreal. Welcome back then to ITV2 viewers. It's the end of the Italian national anthem. Remember, Ralph said to me on the line, uh, yeah, Michael's not going to be coming through. I'm not expecting to see him. I think he'll be a bit sour-faced and surprised to see his brother standing one step higher than him on the podium. And uh, I'm not sure Michael expected to be cruising through quite that comfortably either. They certainly uh, played it well today, James. Chris Dyer there, the Australian engineer who talks to Michael Schumacher, sets his car up with him. What success they've enjoyed together. He uh, collects the trophy, uh, constructs a trophy on behalf of Ferrari. Ralph Schumacher, another pot for his collection. Yet another podium for him. His uh, 24th in Formula One racing. Perhaps not as many as some would think. It's his first podium, though, since France last year, and that was a, I know, a monkey he wanted to get off his back. Speaking yesterday, he said, I can't believe it's a year since I've stood on a Formula One podium, and neither can we. Well, we didn't get an English victory here this afternoon in Montreal. Instead, we got a dominant victory for Michael Schumacher once the rest had fallen away. He makes history then with his seventh Grand Prix victory under uh, the Canadian Grand Prix and uh, who knows England versus France maybe we'll get an England victory there well let's hope so James our cricketers have managed it uh, today I understand just confirmation then of, of the result here Michael Schumacher first in Canada oh you've got to be called Schumacher to win here this century <laughs> Ralph Schumacher in second place, winner here in 2001, the pole sitter. Rubens Barrichello who was so nifty in that Ferrari for a while in third place. Jensen Button, the BAR, just lacking that little bit of pace, has to be content with fourth. Montoya, fifth, a very, very good weekend uh, for Williams, but exceeded their expectations, I would think. Fisser Keller is a Montreal specialist and a super drive from him in the Sauber, as Martin Brundle has said. He's really pleased the way he's driving at the moment. Good strategy from Sauber as well. Kimi Raikkonen, how did he manage to score a couple of points? Just about everything imaginable happened to Kimi, but he still gets his couple of points. And Cristiano da Mata with a single point for Toyota. If I'm right, they scored their first point here last season as well through Olivier Panis. The latest standings then, eight rounds, 18 rounds in this. So we're going to have the halfway stage at Indianapolis uh, next week. Michael Schumacher, what is he now? 18 points clear of Rubens Barrichello. Jensen Button, nine behind Barrichello. It'll drop back to Jarno Trulli. First failure of the season for Jarno Trulli, who's scored in every race so far. Uh, then Montoya, 28. Alonso close up on Montoya, just three points behind. Ralph Schumacher improving up to 20. That people keep telling me that that Toyota deal will be announced very shortly. Takuma Sato, eight points. And Giancarlo Fisichella, eight as well. And in the constructors, exactly double. Ferrari, twice as many as Renault, 122 and 61. BAR have uh, 51. Williams, 48 and uh, Sauber have 13, McLaren 7, Toyota 5, Jaguar have 3, and Jordan have 2. OK, Tony Jardin is with me, um, and we're going to talk in a little while. And uh, actually, I've got a microphone down here, and I'll put it over, because um, what's this guy called again? What's his name? <laughs> Jason <laughs> he's, Burton. He, he's here. <laughs> Jensen, well done. Thanks for dropping in, dropping in to join us. Um, give us the story of the race from your point of view. Perhaps one or two people uh, watching back at home might have expected you to, to finish a little bit higher than you actually did. Well, so did we. You know, starting second on the grid, we thought we were looking quite strong. We thought that maybe the Renaults and the Ferraris were doing a two-stop, but we thought we'd be able to big, pull out a, a big enough gap uh, to stay in front, but we didn't. Um, and the car seemed, seemed to be very oversteer on the first stint. So we changed the, uh, the wing level at the front, and it was a little bit better, but still, we, we just didn't have the pace today. 
When did you realise that? Do you know right from the, from the start, from the first lap, the pace wasn't there? Or, or? In, the, in the first stint, I knew immediately. Um, I knew that we could change the car to help the oversteer slightly, but you know, um, uh, you know pretty, pretty much straight away that you're not going to be quick enough to, to win the race, um, and we weren't even quick enough to be on the podium here. Yeah, sure. I know you, you were particularly worried about the Renaults. Uh, they didn't actually manage to challenge the Ferraris in the end, did they? No, they didn't. And uh, I actually saw Yano alongside me at the start just as he had his problem. I don't know what happened, but he disappeared. It's down here. Take a look at it. He had big suspension problems Ooh. at the start there. That was pretty close, wasn't it? Well, I thought he was following me for the first stint, but it was obviously Alonso. Um, but no, they, they seemed to they seemed to be pretty quick in the first stint, the, the Renault. Um, but after that, I didn't see didn't see him. I don't know what happened. No, of course, and uh, well, Trulli was out there, and then Alonso Ooh. went went later on with, with a failure too. Um, Jensen, you know, we're, we're all we, you, we've gone through the agony of podiums and things, haven't you? Waited so long for that, and um, you, you you must feel you're so close. To, to a first win. Well, I, I thought that until we came here. You know, we we struggled here a lot, and it's it's difficult to understand why. Uh, we thought we'd be very strong here. We were quick in Imola, uh, the same sort of circuit. So we we've got to get back to the drawing board and see what what we've done wrong this weekend. Um, sure. Because for the the Williams to be quicker than us here was was very unexpected. And uh, your teammate Takuma Sato had another of those spectacular blowouts. Can you throw any light on the on it? Why why his engine should keep blowing and yours doesn't? Uh, I there has been uh, a difference in our driving style, um, which could have caused some of the problems. Um, but he was trying to change that. But yeah. I'm not sure if he if he here we maybe go. Well, he here's forgot in the race. Takuma, he's probably all news to you. This isn't. He had a spin there. He said he was going to uh, be more aggressive than normal. And <laughs> I think he's done that. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 there goes uh, yeah. there goes the engine again. I was right behind him when that happened. Really? And um, ours seemed to be the biggest blow-ups because there was a lot of smoke and, and we couldn't see anything. It was like days of thunder, just a, a bit like in Miller. Mm. You, cer you certainly know when those engines go, don't, don't you? Yeah, and, definitely. Um, um, Jensen, you haven't quite managed it, but, uh, but how, how quickly is it one today? And hopefully the footballers will do the same. The yeah, same hopefully afters. we're going to win. That'd be great. Let's hope um, so. Hopefully England can win something today. <laughs> <laughs> You've done all right, Jensen. Cheers. Thanks very much indeed for dropping in to see Thank us. You. Thank you. OK, and when you return, um, Tony has been sitting there patiently hearing about the race and Jensen will give his views on the Canadian Grand Prix. A great drive, Michael. One second in at the end, two stops against three stops of Ralph. Yeah, it uh, sort of worked out uh, to plan from our side. I can't judge whether our competitors had uh, some problems uh, which helped our situation, but uh, we, we had a strong car for the race. We knew that from the beginning. We thought we had no chance for pole position, so we rather went for a strategy which worked for the race, and it just worked out p fantastic. Pit stop was great. Engineers, mechanics, everybody just done a superb job. I mean, car preparation uh, uh, was fantastic. Although I have to say, uh, my teammate Rubens, he just pushed me very, very hard. And I, I think he, he got a, the better deal of his car and his drive uh, this weekend. And he was very strong in, in the second stint in particular. Um, but we managed it. I mean, we managed it another time and it's just fabulous. Squeeze through the first corner as well from P6 on the grid and a lot of pressure at one point from Juan Pablo Montoya as well as Rubens. Yeah, there, there was pressure, but obviously due to the different strategies uh, with Montoya, it sort of came tight, but there wasn't really a worry, even though he would have overtaken me. I wouldn't have worried too much, honestly. He had a couple more laps then and uh, he would have gone in anyway. So there wasn't a big deal. With Rubens, obviously, it was uh, a lot more critical had he overtaken me and uh, pull up a gap, although I had more fuel on board, stayed out longer, knew, knowing that. Who knows uh, what would have worked out. We had a hard fight. It was very tight uh, into the last corner. Uh, I just managed to keep in front. Congratulations. Ralph, third time you Schumacher brothers have been on the podium here in Canada, <coughs> and it was very, very close. Great to see the BMW Williams doing so well today and reliable. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it was clearly better uh, than expected, honestly, but still disappointing. I mean, if you start from pole and you finish half the race and then you finish second, it's not, not what you wish to be. But, I mean, still from where we came and the problems we had so far, I think to, to split up the Ferraris is a, is a rather good success. But, um, obviously, it's a clear sign uh, that we still got some, some chances uh, to be up front. It's just now down uh, to really uh, improve our package and, uh, you know, start again to win races. Well done. Rubens, as Michael said, you did push him very hard there. 
No, it was a great race. It was uh, was uh, fun fighting him. Uh, you know, it was at the end of the day, uh, he got he got a win uh, for Ferrari. I think it was a good result. Um, but uh, it, uh, you know, the only chance I had to to beat him was or overtaking him on the racing track or going a little bit longer. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I had a, a little bit less fuel than him. And uh, you know, when I went out to the to the, to the track again, I had a lot of fuel compared to to him. And uh, and my brake pedal started to really go down, and I pushed like hell that outlet because I wanted uh, desperate to to get in front of him, and unfortunately the the brake just cooked at that uh, that lap, and I went straight into turn eight, and that I, I lost the second position as well because I might have uh, been close to to Ralph and may have a, a chance to overtake. Do you think running close to Michael might have had some factor on the brakes? Well, obviously, I was running very close, and there was no uh, no time for the brakes to to cool down. Uh, you know, the point is, I, I think we enjoy ourselves uh, very much. Uh, you know, uh, he got got another win, and I wish I could have it. But it's uh, it was a lot of fun out there, and uh, I enjoyed myself. He enjoyed himself, Tony. There were quite a few instances, in moments in that race, when you looked, and he looked to be quicker than Michael Schumacher, and Michael Schumacher didn't let him go by. Well, it is interesting because Rubens was actually running his spare car. They'd taken the engine out of his race car and put it into his spare because he damaged the chassis on Friday. He was working that hard. He was trying to find a new way over the curbs, new lines, anything. He said, I must contribute more this weekend. And you knew that he wanted to challenge Michael Schumacher, but I'm sure he wasn't allowed to. I bet that radio was buzzing inside well, his helmet saying, you stay behind Michael Schumacher, Rubens. They were on very, very and different strategies, to be fair to Ferrari, but he blew away. Kimi Raikkonen, who had all sorts of problems in the early on, Rubens Barrichello, showing how feisty he was. Kimi, for me, I, I agree with James. Uh, he is my man of the race, Kimi Raikkonen, because of the grit and the perseverance. And here, you know, everyone knows that until they sort this Mercedes engines out, that it's, you know, it's slow, it's, it's not doing the business down the straight. And there was a Rubens Barrichello just blasting past, making it look very easy indeed. It was a shame from a spectacle point of view that the Renault challenge never really materialised. We spoke to Jensen a moment ago about what happened to Jano Trulli right at the start of the grid. And just as Alonso was starting to get to get ahead of steam on, he had to pull out. And there were problems for him in the pit as well, weren't there? Yeah, they were very clearly the dark horses because they got, they got a revamp in the power and the Renault engine here from Rob White and his people. This was a big problem, being stationary for so long with the nozzle not going on and having to take the spare nozzle as well. This team are extremely well drilled. It isn't a problem with the team, it's an equipment problem, and that equipment is common to all, the Intertechnique equipment. That dropped him right back, and yet Fernando had come back up to fourth place. He'd really been putting in some stonking laps just to go out like that. And it was a great shame because uh, they, they were looking good for the podium. Uh, you think they could, they, could, they could have threatened Ferrari because Jensen ran at the start and he was saying how worried he was about the Renaults? I'll tell you why I think so, Jim, is because A, they're kind to the tyres, B, they've got this the, the new engine which is giving them a lot of power here, and C, with someone like Alonso uh, behind the wheel, yeah. you could see the sort of lap times that he was putting in. And they were the dark horse for quite a few people. I think Martin was also saying, watch out for Renault here. Uh, you spent a lot of years down in, in the pits, and you're always telling me how dangerous it is down there. Another indication today, you wouldn't have wanted to be around the Jordan pit um, when this happened involving Nick Heidfeld's car. No, you wouldn't want to at all. And in fact, you know, you've got, you've got Nick Burrows, you've got Tim Edwards, the team manager, Gerard O'Reilly, very experienced Jordan players down there. And unfortunately, Nick Gom, who's the spares coordinator, you can just see him getting pushed to the ground there. I want to assure everybody at home that we've been told by Louise that he is OK. He was knocked over by the side pod there. Tim Edwards, the team manager, will be looking very carefully at the coordination and what happened. Because my job was to be in charge, was in charge of the pit crew, and you could not let that car go until everybody had finished their work. That's how dangerous it can be, and he's very lucky he wasn't hurt. Yeah, I'm delighted he's OK. Just going back to the Ferraris, first of all, your assessment on, 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 on Michael Schumacher before we see anything about him and Barry Kello. This is, I mean, a tough, tough victory for him, wasn't he? He really had to work for this one. I would say for the 35-year-old, this is one of his most brilliant victories. As you say, just because the work rate that he's put in. They knew from Friday, when the other Michelin runners were that fast and the Michelin tyres were so quick over the early laps, they switched their strategy. They thought, we're going to have to focus on this race. And that's why Michael went out and worked and worked and worked. But 
You've seen him drive like you've never seen him drive before. Absolutely on the limit. Right, absolutely there. And he deserves his victory. Rubens is having a really good season. And you think, as we look at the interplay between him and Michael Schumacher, that this might be one that down the line, Michael Schumacher will say, well, I might just owe him one for Canada. Yeah, but, you know, that's not the way to go. I hate that business of one. I owe him one. I, I believe that what Sir Frank Williams said is he, he begged the Ferrari drivers literally to say, look, stop the team orders nonsense. Let them race like we do at Williams, like we do at McLaren. This is a protest by Rubens Barrichello showing his nose each time at 180 miles per hour. I'm here. And if you haven't seen me, your mirrors are full of red, Michael. Let me go. Let me have a crack. He was very strong in that second stint. OK, so you want to know exactly what was going on in the Ferrari garage. This is the man to tell us, it's Ross Braun. Really Ross, did Michael need to back off as much as he did? No, no, there was no problem, but you know, our style is to win by the minimum necessary. And uh, yeah, you never know when things are gonna go wrong at the end and would push the engines hard during the middle of the race when it was important and we wanted to give it a rest at the end. So there was no problems, it was just strategy. And did you think Rubens would overtake Michael in the middle of the race? Well, we didn't stop him. Um, yeah, he had less fuel than Michael at that stage, and, and it would have been interesting if he had got past because um, you know, he had uh, three laps less fuel, I think, than Michael. It would have been interesting to see what happened to the pit stops. But I need to analyze the race properly because we thought at that stage Rubens could still hold his position against Ralph, and I know he had a little off, and I'm um, not sure how much time that cost him, but we were disappointed that he came out behind Ralph because um, our numbers told us we might do it, but uh, we shouldn't be too greedy. Well done, Ross. I think that's just confirming what Ted Kravitz said that during the race, that Ferrari certainly did not stop Rubens Barrichello from overtaking uh, Michael Schumacher. Felipe Massa, the Brazilian, has dreams of a job at uh, Ferrari one day. Um, a, a really rude awakening for Felipe here and, 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 a, and a, a pretty nasty-looking crash, Tony. It's, it's a big crash. It's a huge impact. And uh, remember, he had a huge impact uh, in Monte Carlo uh, but he has gone he has gone to hospital a local hospital uh, in canada and he's he's got a sore elbow one or two other things it's a big hit and the, the point is jim we're speculating on what happened there you've got some big high curbs here just like imola in fact the track is very similar to imola yeah. but the drivers are not able to attack the curbs the same as they are imola they have to be that little bit more careful and we've had suspension failures and we suspect it is because of the way they they clatter over the sure. big curbs and if you go out to turn three and four and five and six at the back and you see them coming off the curb it is absolutely frightening and the speed they reach here between the concrete walls is also very frightening not a great deal of runoff area we have to remember this is a semi street circuit right and you know that's the result of one of those big crashes brakes at a premium as well he may have had brake failure leading to that okay and uh, he has been uh, been taken to hospital as Felipe Massey we understand it's only for a precautionary checkup I think he's going to be okay for the United States Grand Prix uh, next weekend at Indianapolis uh, his teammate Giancarlo Fisichetti he's a bit of a Montreal specialist he had a super race here today let's hear what he's got to say about it congratulations Giancarlo in the points again this is getting to be a bit of a habit but a very nice habit yeah if, uh... We did a f fantastic job, uh, apart from the start, uh, where I had a problem and uh, I lost uh, lots of position. Uh, yeah, I did a good race, uh, very consistent. Uh, just before the pit stop, I was pushing like a qualifying session, and uh, for that I overtook the two Toyotas. So uh, we have to be happy, Apar apart from the problem uh, uh, to Felipe. Uh, we don't know what happened to him, but the most important thing is uh, he's fine. We talk with him. Yeah, he is fine. Just a few precautionary checks, we said, for Felipe Massi. Salva running on pretty strong at the midway stage of the season. They started off the season very poorly, and they have a car which is very similar to last year's Ferrari. They have the Ferrari engine. No updates on the Ferrari engine, but they're now being able to test. They're now being able to use their new wind tunnel, and they're starting to score points. And Giancarlo is very, very happy, but he's still the target of teams like Williams. He's on the list of Williams. Sure. Peter Sauber has advised him and said, look, stick with us, kiddie. You'll be all right, because you've got a chance of a Ferrari drive if you stay with Sauber. Next week, when, when we go to uh, Indianapolis, we stand by for an invasion of Colombian fans supporting Juan Pablo Montoya. Montoya finishing in the points here today in fifth place. Here he is with Lou. Juan Pablo, were you chasing Jensen hard at the end there, but settled for fifth? No, there's nothing. You know, it was too equal. Uh, my lowest, you know, my weakest point was traction all day. So anywhere I would get close, even with Michael, as soon as we put the power down, I would lose two, three car length. Then 
all the way around the lap into get another to another slow corner and then lose it again. So it was it was fun, you know. We tried pretty hard. Um, you know, yesterday I made a mistake in qualifying and I was in the middle of the pack. I couldn't do anything else. On the whole, though, you pleased with the way that the weekend's gone. The team does seem to be a bit more competitive. Yeah, here it seems to be pretty good, and that's quite encouraging in going into to the next race. That is pretty similar. He is heading for uh, McLaren next season. Kimi Raikkonen somehow nicking, finishing in the points today. Let's get a view from the McLaren team boss, Ron Dennis. Well, Ron, an eventful day for Kimi. Five pit stops indeed, and still finished seven. Yes, uh we had a small electrical fault which was uh, manifesting itself in the steering wheel. We're not sure of the cause, but it kept uh, failing elements of the steering wheel. So we kept changing the steering wheel, but um, only cost us a place. Uh, even with the drive-through, it still only cost us a place. But most important thing is we finished and uh, now we can sort of get a bit more focused on not only finishing, but getting better results. Because that was actual pace. Kimmy had pace, true pace today. David, not the best of starts for you. Yeah, no, my start was okay, but uh, turn two it's always a bit difficult. And uh, one of the Jaguars, I think it may have been Calvin, ran in the back of me. I think very difficult to see what's going on behind you, but I definitely got spun round from behind. So problems right from the start of the race. I mean, were you playing catch up from then on? Yeah, I was pretty much at the back of the field, I think. So uh, on a three-stop strategy from the back, you're, you're always going to be in a bit of trouble. That new motor cannot come quickly enough for, for everybody at McLaren. Just sum it up for us, Tony, the Canadian Grand Prix. Well, absolutely brilliant performance uh, from Ferrari against the odds, but I'm afraid the opposition blew it, and they've got to go back to the drawing board. They've got another chance at Indianapolis, which is low downforce, high on power. Let's see if they can crack it in Indianapolis in a week's time. OK, Tony, thank you very much. You need a reminder that you can see... Uh, in Grand Prix on ITV1, across on ITV1, 11.45 tonight. The show repeated here on ITV2 at 5 tomorrow evening. Stay in North America. We at Indianapolis, qualifying coverage, midnight on the Saturday. Extensive pre-race show, ITV1 from 5 on Sunday. Highlights at midnight. He had to work hard, but he has won it once again. Michael Schumacher remains the boss. Good night. If you'd like to know more about Formula One, the website address sponsored by The Daily Telegraph is itv.com slash f1.